Hello and welcome to Ballon Creek Estate. My name is Eddie and this is my vlog. Today is April the 14th and we are down at uh, Bolton's Machinery here because, uh, with our TW5, uh, because we have come to pick up this nice bit of kit. So I, uh, uh, if you remember last video when we had a look around the auction items, I said I was going to probably try and buy the class uh, forage wagon. Uh, and what I discovered was it was not very good. Uh, it had uh, the brakes were locked on, and there were issues with that. And the chrome, uh, the chrome one was was not very good as well. It uh, it caused power issues with the tractor. Uh, so I asked uh, Boltons to have a look and see if there was a um, anything going that they knew of. And uh, and yeah, they found me this. Uh, it's a Mengel, uh, a Mengel Garant, and uh, and yeah, it's a pretty nice piece of kit. I uh, would we'll probably run it on the John Deere rather than the Ford. Uh, not that I don't think the Ford can run it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it should be good. We're going to get this back to the farm uh, then. Uh, one thing we do have is we have a small problem with the yard at the moment in that we are swiftly running out of space. So uh, we need to go and check on the progress in our other yard. Uh, the one that we've had, uh, the cow shed that we've had converted. Uh, I think the bays, the the bays for the crop storage are now finished, if I recall. Uh, and uh, and yeah, there's a few other bits and pieces I need to show you guys. I think it's I think it's not that far off. I think they've got a little bit of clean up work to do, but in general, uh, the yard is is looking good from what I understand. Uh, so we'll get this back to the farm and then we'll jump in the land and we'll head up there and we'll go and have a look and I'll give you a tour around that. And then finally, we've, uh, we need to go and get planting because the oat seeds have arrived. So we're going to be planting oats in field six. Uh, we're going to be cultivating in the uh, radishes ahead of that and, uh, and yeah, planting oats in field six. Uh, in field six. Which is uh, massive. I mean, that's a big thing. I'm so pleased that our suppliers for the oats came through and we can do that. Right. Where is... You see this? Where I'm going to put this, I don't know at the moment. Right. Our JCB is down there. So I'm just going to park this along here for now. Until a bit later. All right. So we've got uh, very much in the new barn... Uh, in the new storage area, we've gone for a very low-tech solution. We've not, we've not gone with any um, anything along the lines of. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I think we might need to send this in for a um, for a service. Um, the so we've got no uh, grain pit or anything, and it, it doesn't go through a system or anything. We basically just. Emptied out the barns and uh, and recreate and created a load of uh, dividing walls in there, so that we can then use those for storage. Uh, it also means that it's very flexible, so when we've not got stuff in storage here, and even when we do actually, we should have space. Here we are. Ah, oh, they've left the doors open. Fantastic. And uh, and yeah, so here is our new barn space. So we've got, um, doors have moved uh, across slightly. Uh, they used to be uh, between these two barns here. Uh, so we've moved the doors across, and now we have one very nice large door. Uh, and then we've got several loading bays here. So three loading bays down the side. Uh, and then we've got this big loading bay over here, which is probably the easiest to get to, I think. Uh, the only issue we have at the moment, I think, is, th is this pillar here. I would love to remove it, but they've told me that it, it can't be done at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we will have to we'll have to see how possible that is. But, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this. And this is going to give us lots of storage space going forwards. Uh, we've put some seed in here at the moment. And, actually, it's a great place for us to store seed and things like this. But it's a huge space that we've added here, which is brilliant. Uh, the other thing we did uh, was there used to be a door here as well. Uh, so that has been removed. And then down the side here, we've just covered 
that that space there used to uh, be open to the elements. And as we've got storage space the other side, we didn't want that. So uh, so we put some corrugated um, iron along the side there as well. And then this area here has been cleared out. So a nice extra bit of yard here. And so this is now, uh, yeah, this is now actually a pretty great yard. I'm really pleased with this. It's almost, it's almost like uh, this would be a good place for us to, to, to put, you know, most of the farm equipment down to, and sort of decamp from the main yard that we have now, down to here. But uh, for us, I think, I think we will, we will move some machinery and equipment up here. It only makes sense. But it's uh, yeah, this is a good area now, and uh, and it'll be interesting to see how we expand from there. I think, but certainly uh, we'll probably winter the combine there, and we'll keep some other equipments and stuff there. Uh, we're gonna get some conveyors and things to help uh, load and unload the area uh, a bit better. But of course, we need to try and find some specialist grain conveyors for that. So yeah, that is uh, that is basically what we're doing there. Park up. Yeah, there we go. Right, and let's go jump in the JCB. Plant some oats. I think the best way for us to come at it is probably from the road. I've uh, I've cleaned the JCB up since I uh, last you guys saw it. Yeah, especially having parked the uh, tea dub there, so we'll um, we'll head down to the road. Maneuver. This is very maneuverable, but the trouble is with all this seeding equipment on it, it is very long. Maybe about good. So with that, with that uh, very. Um, <laughs> with that very tight turning circle, you have to be careful that it doesn't just kick the end out. Uh, we are completely blocking the road at the moment. There we go. Right. So plan is... Basically, we're just going to seed this field with oats. Now, oats is something that in this part of the world uh, quite a lot of farmers do, which is why I was... Oh, we caught one of our bits on that. Right, there we go. Uh, which is why I wanted to find us a player at a good price who could do it for me. And uh, once I did, uh, it was just a, a case of making sure that they could actually supply it to me. And, of course, we got the confirmation of that a couple of days ago when they delivered the seed for us. Let's turn it all on. There we go. And down. And seed is on as well. And away we go. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, having put the uh, oilseed radish in here. And having had it, it's, it's grown to about 60-ish percent, uh, which will be good for uh, cultivating in and giving us a first stage of fertilization, uh, as well as um, uh, as well as giving us a good basis on which to uh, to grow extra crops. So we should make a decent amount of here. Which for our first year of oats would be fantastic. I really want to make some good money off them. Uh, and down. Down. Don't know if I actually want to have my uh, front seed tank going down in this. I'm not sure it's the wisest idea. But yeah. So yeah, oats oats are a very staple crop up here in Northern Ireland. 
and uh, lots of farmers do them. It doesn't take any uh, specialist equipment on the combine, which is uh, another reason they're great for us. Uh, it's a, a crop we can do without having to worry about um, having to get extra combine equipment. So like if we did um, uh, corn or, or maize, we would have to um, we'd have to have a new header for the combine. And yeah, I'm very, very eager early on in our, uh, our arable journey to ensure that we have sort of minimal... Uh, extra expense for things like extra headers for the combine and things like that. So that rules out that rules out a few other uh, options that are around here. Uh, for example, uh, it means we can't do sunflowers at the moment. We can't do corn at the moment, as neither of those crops are harvestable um, with the header we have on the combine. I mean, we could rent the header for the combine, but when we're doing this for the first year. I don't really see the point. I love the maneuverability of this. It just... We could not maneuver. Woo. We could not maneuver around this farm uh, with a tractor of this size if it didn't have the uh, all-wheel steering. It, ju it just makes the, a massive difference to getting this tractor about. Anything else, and we would have, have had big problems. But this is uh, this this does the job. This allows us to do the jobs quickly as well. It allows us to get through. Uh, you know, we don't have to separately cultivate and uh, seed this field. And I know there are other ones that um, you can get that allow you to other bits of machinery that allow you to cultivate and plow as well and wider ones too but the beauty of this setup is that we can plow as well if we want and I think the, tra the tractor might be powerful enough to do it I'm not sure it's something that maybe at some point I will have to test uh, probably not for a while I think we're alright for um, uh plowing at the moment. We'll see how we go moving forwards though. We're going to have to do a whole round of fertilising soon I think. We've got crops that are beginning to grow and we have uh, and we have grass that, that very soon is going to be cut. I think we're probably going to be trying to uh, do some fertilisation on grass uh, next time. Yeah, look at that maneuverability. That means that we only have to have two rows for the headland, which is... That is awesome news. Yeah. Yeah, having only two rows for the headland just reduces so much of, uh, of the waste. Although, having said that, we do need to leave enough space for our combine to turn around. So it's not just how quickly this turns around. It is also how quickly our combine turns around. And if we can't get that right, then we have a little bit of a problem. Because obviously the combine then, or the combine driver then has a really bumpy ride. Okay. But in general, just really pleased with how maneuverable this is. There we go. And away we go again. Make sure I get it all. I'm not using the ridge markers uh, because it's actually fairly obvious, I think, where I need to go. I am going to have to try and do something about that strip that I missed, though. As annoying as that is. Uh, but, yeah, so we are going to finish off this field. We'll get this done. There we go. 
giant. Yeah, I'm not sure I need that front down. I think we might have a smoother time of it if I if I don't. Uh, but yes, so uh, yeah, we can get this done. We're gonna get this field finished and done with our oats. I think this is the final field we actually have to plant this year. I was waiting uh, simply because the um, uh, for the radish. I needed the oilseed radish to grow a fair way before I cultivated it in. Uh, the more I could, uh, the longer I could wait, the more I was able to, uh, to gain from it. Uh, however, uh, it has got to the stage where we really need to get the oats in. And having had the green light from the provider, it was one of those things where, uh, yeah, I just, I just could not wait. And I'm pleased with our new barn. That is gonna, that is just gonna make life a lot easier on the farm. And it was, and it was just a barn that we weren't using. Um, you know, it it had a little bit of ca uh, cattle usage, but nothing near it, anywhere near. Um, a, you know, a barn that size would probably uh, be used for. And, um, and the thing is, it's a long way from our cow field. You know, our cows are up here. Uh, having that over there it actually makes sense for us to, to decamp to that uh, barn now. Simply because uh, this then focuses the dairy area at uh, this yard and uh, and focuses the arable at the other but I think we'll see how we go I don't think I've got enough space up, uh, at that barn to fit everything but we certainly have enough space to fit some of our stuff and uh, yeah the, the bays don't necessarily have to all be used for storage although we do have at least three different crops I think so we are going to need three separate bays to store crops in this year. Uh, which may just be the bays down the side. But we'll see how we go. We'll see what our yields are, to be honest. Never really expect more than a, a single trailer's worth off any given field. I think we might need a new bucket as well for the TW5-15. Uh, uh, it's the only way I think we're going to be able to load stuff up initially. As I said, I want to get conveyor belts, but that is... Uh, well, eventually, I would like to put in a pit and uh, and storage area. But that's I think that's a way off. That's probably a couple of years off. For the moment, we just just having somewhere to store our crop. That is, that is a good thing. That's going to allow us to hold it long enough that uh, the price will increase and the price will be better so that was the aim with that barn um yeah money money wise it just hasn't been uh, possible to do the uh, the full grain store setup which is my original plan was but yeah it's it's not it's not able to do that uh, but we're about halfway through this field now, and um, I think uh, I'm going to leave you guys here. I will get this field done and dusted and lots of oats in it, and uh, and we will look to harvest it come the autumn. But for now, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from the farm, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.